All right, guys, I already had some leftover uh, lime and chartreuse, okay? Because we're making uh, limeade. But I added some uh, liquid plastic salt to them. So that means I got to run both of them to 350. Now, I've done that while I was shooting the fluke. We'll go ahead and shoot the LC Shad. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to, I said, I'm going to correct a mistake. In this video, I said that I sell the fluke and limeade. I do not. Uh, I just went back and looked. Guys, I've got uh, 16 body shapes, and I tried to count the colors up one time. I've got over 40 colors. When I got over to 40, I said, that's it. Colors or color combos. But I do sell them in the LC Shad. In this fluke, I sell killer in dual colors. Killer, menace, live bait, and meal time. Okay? There you go. The fluke's an excellent bait, and the reason I don't sell limeade in it is because I don't sell many flukes. I sell a few. Uh, if I if I sold more flukes, I would move it to it. Maybe we'll we'll do that later on this fall because I am going to. Uh, I'm trying to come up with a with a LC shad, which is just for somebody watching new. This is the LC shad. I'm going to try to come up with this body shape, okay, in the uh, in an inch and a half. And we're going to put a lot of colors in that when it comes out. Uh, some dual colors in that also. And uh, it's going to be a big seller. But if the fluke was a bigger seller, I'd make more in it. All right? But it, I do make it in LC Shad, and we're going to shoot it while we're doing it. So you can get to see what they look like in it also. Okay, I've showed this before. Let me bend y'all's head down here. See all them bubbles and all that junk on the front? All right? I'm going to put it in the vacuum chamber. Oops, watch I poured out. Smooth now, isn't it? All right, guys, let's get the chartreuse going now. I've got to, uh, i got to count these out. How much chartreuse I'm putting in there? Because I added, I added, uh, eight ounces of plastisol before I cooked it. So I needed to add ten drops. Now, what you do when you're making baits is you write down your recipe on how many drops you put. Now, I've had a few people ask me about recipes. Uh, it depends on what coloring you're using. It depends on what brand coloring you're using. All that can change. What kind of plastic you're using. If you're not using the same plastic, the same company could change some. All right? So, some coloring, some companies are stronger. The best thing to do is just do what I'm doing now. Stir it around. Look at it and get it, and get it to the uh, color you want it. Now, anytime you shoot dual colors, I'm going to, I've got it to what it should be now, but I'm going to add five more drops. I'm going to tell you why. Anytime you're shooting dual colors, you tend to lose some of that color and I always make them a little darker. When you look at the Blue Boy uh, uh, winter color, which is Blue Boy, when you look at that, you're going to say, that's a darker blue, Dennis, than what you've been making on uh, gold. When you've been making on uh, the blue boy by itself, yes, you're exactly right. I make it a little darker because the pearl steals away from it. If I don't make it a little darker, and this is chartreuse flake, okay, I mix it like I mix it in one cup, it will uh, steal away from it, okay? And I've, I've shot it many a times in the, the first round. This is silver. The first time I shoot them, I go like, Man, that's not, the blue boy is not close to being dark as it should be because it steals from it, you know, when you put two colors together. So I've learned that when I shoot dual colors, I make them a little darker than I would if I wasn't going to shoot, you know, just by itself. So if I was going to shoot this by itself, I would have made it a lot lighter than what it is, all right? Now that's the chartreuse mixed. I got the lime in a, uh, I got, I just put a little bit of piece of, I just put a piece of dirt in there. Uh, I'm going to put it in that cup. That's what you got to watch, guys. You get some dirt on them. I got the other one in another back way behind y'all. Don't, don't y'all turn around and look. I'll set it up here for you. All right, there's the lime. Now, the lime's the same way. This is just neon lime. I shook them up good, guys, while it was cooking. While y'all was uh, taking a nap. All right. That should be really close. All 
And that's what I'm doing now. I'm going like this. I'm looking how dark it is. But I think it needs a touch more. I'm not scared, as y'all can see, to put a touch more in it. And that's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'll put five, six more in it. Oh, yeah, it looks better. Again, I'm shooting dual colors. I just looked at my recipe calls per cup. They called for 18 drops to a cup. And that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you make it plenty dark enough. Now, this one gets... Uh, this is lime glitter. Yeah, you would think so. You would think you need lime glitter, wouldn't you? That's lime glitter. That's a, this is the I put it up there because that's the only this is the only color I use it in. Okay, this is this is gold, but it's bigger gold. It's one oh fifteen. All these are 015 glitters. Now 015 glitters are a good size bigger. The other one is all uh, 008. Now you can get smaller than that, but that's pretty small. Uh, a lot of guys are using 035. I use a little bit of that in Blue Boy, but I believe when you get too big a flake in the crappy base, I think it takes away from them. You know, you got a little small thing and you got a big old flake in it. Well, that's not right. If you can look at the pepper flake in this banana pepper, okay, that's that's 015. Y'all see them in there? That's 015. Now, if you get bigger than that, to me, you took away from the base. All right, now, now that looks good. I gotta heat these back up. I gotta get them to about 335 in that area, 340. Then we're gonna shoot these molds, okay? I got a swim bait mold too sitting behind me. I'm gonna slide it over in front of these cups. And uh, we're gonna try to shoot it too. Here we go. I wanted to shoot these LC shad. There you go. Now we look that cool. I want y'all to see them and see the di woo. They pull down. See the difference that it makes. That scares me when it pulls down that fast. I think sometimes uh, it means I had a void in there. There's the other motor shot. I might not. When you pull that thing, pushing down on two at a uh, time, that gun, it's a different feeling than doing a single injector. And when you switch from one mold to the different, no mold, these molds take more plastic than this one. It feels totally different too. So it's easy that I might not push down hard enough on this and after I did on these two, but we'll find out when we open them up. Let's let them cool. Give them about 10 minutes. All right, guys, let's open them. Let's open one of each of these. Bam. This is the fluke. Alright. And you can see the difference in color. Here's here's the ones I was fishing with. I got these off my boat. Alright, I'll go. Sometimes I get them like that to compare them. See they're right there, aren't they? Alright. Now yeah, I thought, let me get that one off my boat. That's what I do sometimes. Usually I got one hanging here. I don't see one right off the bat. I hang them up so I have something to compare them to when I'm shooting them. And I'm going to show you this LC Shad. All right. And doesn't that shoot nice? I see I can shoot 24 at a time, too. All right. Yep, you can see that old chartreuse belly. Yeah, they're nice. Now. Y'all want to see this swim bait? This is the four inch swim bait. I sell these at Hollow Grove Marina. All right. That goes into the remelt bag, y'all. I make lime remelts. This is where it comes from. I melt these two together. These stems right here. And they make the remelts. There you go. There you can see it in a, in a bigger body. All right. This is four inches. You see the chartreuse line there pretty good. So this shoots pretty good too. Yep. But this LC Shad probably is the best shooting uh, mold I have. It just separation line on these and stuff. It's just it's like you took a pencil and drew it across there. You know, it wouldn't be any better if you just if you took a pencil and just drew your line across there. 
All right, guys, there you go. You know the routine? One through 400. I do it on Wednesday night. I get set up around 5 o'clock, take off. If you leave your number at 5.30, it's too late. Usually by 5.30, I'm done, guys. All right? Um, I film that. I load that on Thursday mornings, okay? You must be a subscriber. Make sure you subscribe. I load this on Sunday mornings. You got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to 5 o'clock to, subscribe, to uh, subscribe and leave a number. I have people that leave number on Thursdays, sometimes on Friday, sometimes the next week. It's because they don't know, all right? They don't know, and they're not listening to this part of the video, all right, after the shop part, or they're not listening to it at the end. Usually at the end, I mention it again, right? Hope you all enjoy the video. The fishing's still a little tough here, but I'm catching fish. Hey, guys. See you next time. Bam. There you go, guys. Found one. I'm going to tell y'all something. I done been a couple places already. Done been a couple places. They are still hard to catch. And uh, this is a dock that I think I've only fished one time. And I was riding down the lake. And I thought, <laughs> I thought, let me go see if my boat will... Oh, messed him. Let me go see if my boat will blow up into this one. The wind's blowing, guys. It's uh, Labor Day weekend. All right, I lost the last one. Let's see if I get this one in. Now, guys, I was fishing a place that had a bunch of fish, probably 20 or 30. Two schools were there when I started at, and didn't catch any of them. Never got a bite. I tried a couple different colors, and like an idiot, I stayed there for about half an hour. And I kept trying a few different colors. I even tried a little bit, Mena. Yeah. And I was just trying to see if I could get something going on those inactive fish. Um, you know, sometimes you can find something to farm up and you can catch them. You know, you'll catch three or four then. But that didn't happen. Uh, I don't know why sometimes it's like that. But I reckon the secret is when you find fish that are inactive, I don't care if it's a hundred of them. <laughs> you know, I reckon. And you're not getting bit. So I don't had I done made five casts here and caught uh, three fish and lost one. That something bumped me that time, and there's not many here. It's probably only ten here. But if you're not catching them and they're not paying any attention to you, you just need to move. Oh, what in the world here? All right, guys, they're not easy to cast. I'll have to work for them. They like that limeade. I've tried a few different colors today, and I think limeade's been. The, been a trick. He's a decent one. He's about 11 inches. I never him after losing the other one. What I done too? Ouch! Besides running the hook in my finger. Ah! Open your mouth. There you go. Yeah, decent crappy. He's about 11, 11 and a half. What I done too, guys? If you notice, I went to a 132nd ounce head. Got rid of the 116th, so I get a slower fall. Sometimes you got to change up a little bit on them when they quit hitting you. Change something a little bit. Change the weight. Change the way you're working it. All right, guys. Found another one. It's about 10 under there, maybe 12. And it's a cedar tree, and I'll give you all a shot before I cut the death finder off. All right, like I said, guy. Well, he decided he wanted off. He flopped. He just tore the hook out. There you go, guys. Look at his tail. He'd be a little longer if he hadn't tore his tail up, wouldn't he? All right, guys, I pulled the microphone out for a minute so I could do this. See, it's a little cedar tree there, so there's not many. There's one fish. See, there's not many there. There's a couple there, and there's a couple right in here. Yeah, it's only a few there. Well, that's what I was figured. <laughs> this fish followed me out and kept following me. And uh, he finally hit me out here in open water, and I thought, He's not moving like a crappy, but I'll stop it. I'm trying to put a hook in me now. But there's plenty of these in this lake, I'll tell you that. All right, guys, this is the Lime Aid Color Fluke, okay? I've got this fluke in quite a few dual colors. Killer, um, live bait, mill time. Check it out. It's a great bait. has a good tail action. It's got a forked tail. Okay, it's segmented right here. It helps to give it more action, all right? I started off with the 116th 
at that dock that I went to uh, 132nd to finish it off. I thought I'd pull out here away from the dock to do the uh, outro because uh, there was a young man there and we talked between fish. He was there. He's like he said he was from Ohio visiting. So we talked between fish and stuff. I thought, well, I'll, I'll get away from the dock to do that outro. Because he asked me what I was doing and I told him. But y'all know the routine. It's one through 400. I do a random number draw on Wednesday night and it's very random. You never know what the machine's going to give us, computer's going to give us. And then I do it at 5 o'clock, guys. At 5 o'clock, I start preparing, getting ready. Usually by quarter after 5, 20 after 5, I'm done. If I've been fishing or doing something outside and I come in at 5.30, then it'll happen at 5.30. But most of the time, I get started around 5. I look at the clock, hey, it's almost 5 o'clock. I go in and I, usually after 5, I do it. I'm telling you that because people are still leaving numbers at 6 to 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. It's not going to happen. If you hit the number on the head, I know some will come back when it ain't went. I hit it on the head and you didn't pick me. Well, your number wasn't there at 5 o'clock, okay? I draw at 5 o'clock. If you leave your number at 5.15, 5.30, it might not happen. I might, be, I might be done. So leave your number. You get, you've got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and all day Wednesday to leave a number. I'll take and load that video on Thursday morning, and I'll... As soon as you win on Wednesday night, I'll comment to you. Like I did last week, I comment to the winner and say, hey, send me your address. He sent his address to me. I shipped out this morning to him. Uh, actually, it was lunchtime. I went to Mexican restaurant and ate. Yeah, y'all figured that, didn't you? I usually eat up on Fridays. I went up there and ate lunch today, about 1 o'clock, and I stopped at the post office and mailed out. So his is on his way to him, okay? And that's what I usually do. Because I eat up there usually on Friday if I'm around the area and not working uh, somewhere, you know, close by. And I usually don't work Fridays. And I mailed it out to him. All right. Appreciate y'all guys. There's another good bait. Appreciate y'all watching. This is Friday evening before Sunday uh, video. Some of y'all asked me how I've been catching fish. I'm still catching fish, guys, but I'm not catching as many as I have been. But it's going to get better. We're, we're, in, we're in a time right now. The sun angle is changing. Everything's changing some, okay? And that's what's harming the fish. The fishing is not as good now as it has been. Everybody I talk to, locals, say the same thing. All right, even a couple of local guys are asking me, you know, about it now. And I'm telling you right now, it's not as good as it has been. It happens every year during this time period, okay? It's, it's the fish are going through a change. The days are getting shorter. The angle of the sun's changing. All that makes a difference, guys. But here shortly, give it about another three weeks. We get by middle of September, toward the third, of September, third week in September. It's going to get good, guys. I promise you, it's going to get good. October and November are the best months here. Some of y'all locals ask me that. The best fishing is October, November. November, where everybody's hunting, you can catch a bunch of crappie. I've gotten to schools that are 100 fish big, guys, in November, and they'll sit there in one spot and catch fish for hours. Yep, everybody's, and everybody's deer hunting. All right, guys, appreciate y'all guys. We'll see you next time. Fishing Lake Country.